So moving on just about in time, um, I, I hardly know how to um, introduce um, properly uh, our next speaker um, who has been, had an, a, 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 a held a number of key national leadership positions in relation to psychological professions and advancement, both in research um, and delivery of psychological therapies. Um, um, introducing Professor Peter Fonagy, um, who's going to tell us a little bit about children's mental health in London and some of the key um, the key initiatives that are driving uh, driving forward uh, our work in this area. So uh, a very, very warm welcome to Professor Peter Fonagy um, uh, this morning. Hello, Peter. Welcome. Over to you to take us away. Thank you. And I'm uh, absolutely delighted uh, to be here. Um, uh, if I could have just have my slides, um, uh, or I, oh, perfect, uh, and I can... I think even have competence to move them on by myself, uh, which is remarkable. Um, so where are we now? Um, and I'm going to actually take a, 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 a national uh, picture because we are, um, uh, where the nation goes is where London goes, uh, by and large. Uh, so a number of things that you might or might not know about that I just want to mention. Um, uh, one is um, uh, the Health Select Committee um, that uh, had, uh, uh, at the end of uh, last year, 9th of December, uh, put forward an evaluation of the uh, uh, government's progress against its policy commitments in the area of mental health services in England. Um, at the same time, actually, as Children's Mental Health Service report um, came in. Um, now, I was on the, one of the advisors uh, to the Health Center Committee, so I was there at, at the meetings. And one of uh, the interesting things was that uh, uh, adult mental health services got a bit of a roasting um, in terms of um, uh, commitments like physical health checks, integrated uh, community models, improved therapy uh, offer for severe mental health crisis resolution home treatment team did better uh, but for the most part in terms of the level of commitment the funding uh, of it the impact it's made the appropriateness of the original commitment i'm getting a, a little bit of feedback unfortunately uh, thanks uh, uh, so uh, in relation to all these it got a, a, a requires improvement overall. Uh, the workforce issues that we are all too familiar with also got a, a, a required improvement. What actually uh, did slightly better uh, was children and young people's uh, mental health commitment. Um, so um, it's accepted that um, uh, the Commitment uh, to children and young people's mental health is good. Uh, it's accepted that uh, funding is reasonable, that impact uh, it has made is good. What's not accepted is that the level of the uh, targets uh, for that commitment is adequate. Um, but uh, for eating disorders, and I'll say some more about that, uh, the commitment was accepted as good and the crisis response uh, left as requiring improvement, but uh, better than most. Now, what, what's the background to this? Um, um, and, and the background um, is that we have been at work uh, in relation to this um, for some time. Um, so um, uh, it's... Um, uh, I think it doesn't need me to uh, remind everybody about the five-year forward view, the green paper, the long-term plan for the NHS, all of which uh, had a, um, a major commitment to something that actually um, was uh, a, a commitment made in future in mind that many of you may not even remember. I was uh, around at the time. The point being, um, that there is um, an understanding that children's mental health got left behind. Uh, mental health, which in itself got left behind, obviously, uh, physical health, as we, as we know. Um, 
So uh, the commitment uh, to this uh, has been, um, uh, I think, uh, good, um, but, uh, and this is the major but, and this is where London uh, comes back into the picture. Um, so, um, uh, uh, there are record numbers of uh, children and young people who are accessing support. And we're talking about something like, um, uh, in 2021, 57% uh, had their first contact compared to 47% uh, uh, two years uh, uh, earlier. Um, in terms of second contact, it's um, the increase is, is, is slight less, and that indicates the inadequacy to some degree of the, the service. The second contact is the kind of the best proxy that we have of a treatment being initiated. Um, but um, some of the improvement was um, in association with mental health um support teams and that was in the green paper um 2017 and uh, i have been um directly uh, involved uh, in this um and uh, uh, uh i would say um uh, that this is a, a little bit of a success story um so there are going to be by 2023 um something like 400 mental health support teams uh, serving over a third of uh, pupils in England. Um, but um, uh, having said that, there is this uh, wonderful story. Uh, what we should also say that against this, there is massively Im uh, improve, uh, increased prevalence. Um, and um, Nobody fully understands this, and I'm not uh, about here to explain why um, children and young people's mental health. There was an underlying increase uh, that um, I think most of us recognized. Um, but had the prevalence remained stable, uh, I think we could say that almost 40% of children uh, would now get treated. As it happens, because of the increased prevalence, uh, we are pretty much where we were in 2017, that only about a quarter <clears throat> of those with probable mental health problems are receiving treatment. And that's, that's uh, 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 not good, given that there are, within this group, in, the, in a, uh, some groups that have really very high levels of prevalence. So uh, children uh, uh, with... Um, special educational uh, needs and neurodevelopmental conditions. Um, uh, it's uh, a, um, a, a really quite a depressing uh, picture, but also LGBTQ um, uh, children, uh, disadvantaged, those with poor family, those with influence. The prevalence rates for these groups are, are really about 50% almost, so between 40 and 50%. It's horrific uh, uh, when you uh, think about it. Um, so um, uh, one group uh, that I really should identify that I think in London, we felt uh, perhaps um, uh, more than uh, uh, many uh, other areas is, is eating disorders. And um, uh, there's been a huge surge um, in eating disorder referrals to the extent um, that the uh, uh, probably is a consequence of um, in part of the pandemic and the lockdown nobody really knows um, but the number of urgent cases the number of routine cases have almost doubled as you can see on those slides uh, so services are really struggling and it has made a massive impact on um, uh, uh, on waiting times. Um, uh, I, I wish I had an answer to this why, um, uh, but I do not. 
Another area where there is uh, real pressure is uh, on inpatient services. Um, and there had been a program to improve access um, uh, in the number of beds, particularly uh, beds in um, uh, underserved areas. Um, but uh, no sooner uh, we open beds, they have to be closed because of quality issues. Um, so um, uh, it has actually meant that uh, despite increasing number of beds, uh, the availability has uh, not improved substantially. Uh, now, back to uh, uh, matters uh, closer to home. Um, uh, psychological, the psychological workforce has benefited uh, from a major improvement in, in the workforce um, amongst children, uh, the children and young people's workforce over the past uh, few years. And, um, I want to just uh, spend a moment or two um, talking about that because uh, uh, it has been terrible. Uh, it was terrible. So the headcount moved uh, from um, uh, 11,000 to uh, 18,000, but the, in terms of whole time equivalent, it's only about 9,000 to uh, 15,000. And um, what it represents is a 40% improvement almost um, uh, in the voluntary sector and the, uh, uh, and the um, um, uh, independent sector as well, following a similar trend. But at the same time, uh, in local authorities, there has been a decrease um, of 44%. Um, so uh, I would uh, say there is uh, something to celebrate here, but also uh, that part of the local authority uh, depletion in workforce, I think, impacted on prevention services, which partly drives the increased prevalence rates that we are seeing um, uh, across uh, uh, the mental health field. And um, I think um, that's, that's, that's not a good thing. Um, so um, moving on, um, uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, drawing your attention to the linked problem that uh, without local authority help, without community assets, without a broad range of public services, children, young people's mental health services will invariably suffer. And that is, from my point of view, the, uh, if you like, um, the uh, place where increased numbers of psychological practitioners in the London area, uh, but elsewhere as well, really need to need to make our presence felt. Uh, just being within the NHS will not solve the problem. Psychological practitioners need to be in the community with voluntary sectors, with local authorities, with other public services um, to actually uh, release, relief, provide uh, a relief to burden um, of uh, uh, what the NHS is experiencing, which I hope that I gave somewhat of an indication of, but I'm sure that all of you working in the front line have a very clear experience and understanding of. Um, let me now give an overview, um, which uh, um, uh, is kind of on one slide, trying to indicate to you um, where evidence-based interventions across the system uh, are lying, because it's a, a mixed picture of um, uh, deprioritized and prioritized services um, with more or less evidence base. And what you can uh, see here is um, in, in green uh, 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 squares are strong evidence base, and in red um, triangles, uh, where um, 
funding uh, trajectory is pointing downwards. Um, um, and I think uh, in, uh, in the darkest shade of gray, you can see universal services. And in uh, white, you can uh, see uh, uh, limited uh, services that are, are going out and partial and targeted services in gray in between. Also uh, on the slide, you can see where it's early uh, on the left, primary school age, secondary school age, and uh, uh, 18 to 25 at the right hand uh, of the slide. Uh, and then uh, down, you can see family, community, education, employment, and digital. It's trying to summarize for you uh, everything that's going on. Um, now, uh, these are where uh, the non-NHS uh, services should be and where I think uh, psychological practitioners could play uh, uh, a role uh, in London uh, in these initiatives. So um, in uh, children and, and social care, that's DFE funded, that has been uh, that where there are strong evidence-based uh, uh, services across the developmental uh, spectrum and where uh, case, uh, which is like the Gould case that many of you would have come across, have shown the NHS to fail, but social care to fail as well, children with complex uh, mental health problems, um, where uh, psychological practitioner input could really make a difference uh, should funding be made, made available. Family hubs uh, are uh, being rolled out across London and 25% um, uh, will be covered by the local authorities uh, or will have family hubs, which are kind of one-stop shops um, offering early help um, but also uh, help right the way through to 25. Family hubs must have psychological uh, practitioners. Some of the services offered in family hubs are uh, currently mixed evidence-based uh, and psychological practitioners that have a strong uh, evidence base uh, have a, a also strong input to make. Um, Health visiting, we haven't, uh, I don't want to touch on, we have never been invited properly, but in a training capacity, we certainly have uh, something to uh, contribute. Um, uh, reducing parental conflict program is a kind of a partial targeted program that's being funded. The evidence base is, is mixed, uh, but there are psychological practitioners uh, working within it. Uh, supporting families um, uh, program, again, it's, it's partial uh, and uh, uh, we're doing um, uh, some work there. Uh, uh, it's a targeted program, uh, not there, but it has a strong uh, or strongish evidence base. In the community, uh, a mixed picture uh, on uh, uh, the community sector, I've already made a plea for that. Out of school activities, uh, not a strong evidence base. Uh, the uh, social prescribing, psychological practitioners should be involved in it. It's a mixed evidence base at the moment. Local authority, public mental health uh, spending, uh, it's a tragedy that funding is going down there. We, can, we could do so much in that domain in terms of prevention. Um, a, the hub model is coming in. Um, there is a lot of um, uh, sympathy from all the ministries on establishing hubs that are driven by voluntary sector, providing particularly for secondary school age children and young people, an intermediate uh, 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 psychological service uh, between specialist CAMs, specialist children, young people's mental health services, and um, uh, also uh, and uh, mental health support teams in schools. 
Um, uh, similar to these are early access uh, youth support and counseling services um, that exist uh, uh, in different um, kind of rather spread um, models across the city um, uh, that some specialize in um, uh, particular interventions like drug and alcohol services. Um, a couple more things to kind of highlight for you. Um, um, uh, uh, there are, um, um, uh, I will uh, talk about um, uh, violence reduction services in a minute, uh, I hope in a, a, a little bit more fully, um, but um, I, I would want to um, uh, emphasize the interaction that I think has been talked about already with education uh, for children, young people, but also uh, early employment. Uh, uh, I do believe there is much that we can do in uh, as psychological practitioners um, in enabling young people uh, to enter the workforce more effectively. Um, uh, there are very good um, protocols that are evidence-based that should be disseminated um, uh, in schools, um, through school-based counseling, but also um, um, uh, through uh, extracurricular activities, um, send support and uh, um, uh, workplace support, um, uh, as well as perhaps university support. Um, I, I want to, um, uh, I'm not going to talk about digital at the moment. Uh, other people can talk about it. But again, psychological practitioners have a great deal uh, to contribute. Let me um, uh, talk about one initiative that I've been uh, involved in. Um, that is uh, something that's being rolled out across London. Uh, the London uh, Vanguard, which is a community multi-system violence reduction model. And uh, this is a model of care that uh, colleagues and I in an uh, expert advisory group, particularly with Sherry Peck from Safer London, with her leadership, uh, we put together a model of care that's preventative, that involves uh, psychological practitioners, but uh, linked to case workers working from the voluntary sector, sharing much with individuals um, uh, who are the recipients of the services with whom they can develop trusting relationships and where services uh, can be uh, coordinated uh, around uh, children, young, young people. Um, uh, uh, we feel proud of the model that we put forward. I do not know um, what, how well this is going to be put into practice. What I um, do know um, uh, is uh, that there is some money behind it. So the London Vanguard Community Multisystem system Violence Reduction Model that's supposed to be based on this has uh, nearly 10 million uh, in funding and that's pooled with uh, some transition to adults hub funding as well as home office serious youth violence bids funding uh, uh, collaboration uh, uh, with YEF that's another 10 million and that in total should give mental health and well-being support for children and young people across London with psychological services, including cognitive behavior therapy. Uh, and uh, London, as you can see on this slide, is reasonably uh, well covered um, uh, with uh, some Vanguard services, um, uh, uh, with the full model, some uh, with uh, just prevention, early intervention uh, components, um, some with uh, CBT uh, uh, training, uh, with tier one and tier two funding. Um, uh, and uh, uh, in Newham, there are some additional uh, uh, resources for the uh, 18 to 25 uh, transition group. So um, uh, I hope that I painted a picture um, uh, that uh, uh, where um, there is a massive, massive, massive emphasis 
in the children, young people's um, services on uh, uh, developing uh, the um, psychological practitioner workforce, particularly for children, young people, particularly uh, in underserved uh, areas. Uh, I think we are, we have done well, um, but prevalence uh, is um, uh, against us. Uh, but that it's going to improve uh, as the pandemic turns into an endemic, I do not know if anybody knows. I want to emphasize that underlying uh, trends of increased prevalence were there pre-pandemic. What I do want to stress is that the solution to this problem has to be the offering of effective, evidence-based, close to the community, psychological help uh, for children, young people, as part of integrated services with the voluntary sector, the social care sector, as well um, as uh, the NHS. And that is all I uh, had to say. Thank you very much for listening. Sorry for the gap there. I'm just unmuting. It's a classic of the of the year. Sorry, Peter. Thank you so much. It was absolutely brilliant and clear presentation of the realities. I guess, um, yeah, just just what we have to do. Um, but uh, I know you have to disappear. But we're really grateful for the way you've set that out for us. And looking forward after a short break in a moment to hearing from some of those a charity working as, as just as you describe supporting women and girls across the capital. So thank you very much for presenting it as you have today. Really appreciate. It. Cheers Thank now. You. Thank you. I, I know you have to step oh, away. Thank you so much. Really, um, really, really clear.